Welcome to Goldfish on Games, where it seems light guns were mostly known for their console counterparts. But today, we're going to be checking out one for the ZX Spectrum, the Magnum. <laughs> Made by Amstrad in 1989 for their range of machines, this one, as hinted by the sticker on this very beaten box, is for the ZX Spectrum Plus 2. The box also boasts that it included six games worth over 20 British pounds, which was to make it seem like it was better value for money as this pack initially cost over 30 pounds, which is close to almost costing 70 pounds in today's money. So it wasn't cheap and that isn't helped by the fact that lots of budget spectrum games could be gotten for two quid. Inside the box we get two manuals. The first one is for the light gun itself and covers the operation for all three versions of this pack for the three main Spectrum machines. The second one covers all six games, though some of them are barely a paragraph in length. The games are also across three cassettes, with one game per side. No fancy cases or covers here, just the cassettes and a moulded plastic packaging and with the game names printed on each side of the tape. And finally we have the actual gun with a cable that likes to melt as well as get stuck on the packaging. And at first glance it does look very similar to the Master System light phaser. But it does have enough differences that you can tell them apart. And not least of all is that very prominent Spectrum logo. But it also has a trigger that's a little bit squeaky and far more spongy than Sega's gun. But it uses the UK telephone connector rather than the standard joystick port. So it's time to break out the plus two and connect the light gun, which connects via the keypad or the aux slot, depending on your model. And with it hooked up, let's turn on the spectrum, which I've connected to my CRT TV. And the cable isn't quite as long as you might expect, but this was due to the fact that you still needed to use the keyboard for a number of the games. So let's check out the six packed in games and see how good this gun is and how good the games are. Thankfully, being a plus two, it is easier to load up games from a cassette. And amazingly, even after all this time, the game fully loads from tape. Just watch it go. On second thoughts, let's just skip straight to the game, shall we? The first game is Missile Ground Zero, which is a Missile Command clone. But you get to direct your shots using the light gun, which in this game doesn't seem to be the most precise gun ever made as while using the iron sights does work, it doesn't always go where you'd expect at first, so you need to fire off a few rounds to adjust your aim, but once you do, it's mostly okay, but shooting while not moving your hand can result in wildly different locations flashing up on screen, but it is a very colourful game with lots and lots of items on screen, it's very much a budget title, but it is a decent one. The B-side of Tape 1 is Rookie, which is one of the more stereotypical light guns as it's just a target shooter, but the targets show up in quite a few locations and you'll have to hit boxes to get more bullets. And when you clean out an area, you can shoot the arrows at the top of the screen to change the environment. Hit detection feels much better in this game, but that could be down to the fact that I've had more practice. Still, it's very much in the budget range, but far more fun than the previous title. And onto the second tape and we find Solar Invasion, which after the last few games is a bit of a disappointment as it pits you against an alien race that will keep breeding and take over the solar system if you don't stop them. And amazingly, it's not humans. But what you do get to do is shoot various aliens and objects while trying to direct your craft using the buttons on screen. You have a radar to help direct you around and you have bombs which can help you take out entire screens, which is nice but the whole game itself doesn't really quite hang together. 
collision detection really seems quite poor, and the graphics just seem a bit lazy. It is very much the most budget title we've seen so far. But that won't last long, because on the B-side is Robot Attack, possibly the lowest effort light gun game in the collection. Your job, to shoot the robots, and to stop them from collecting the boxes. As each time they do, the Mega Robot or Alien will grow. Some of the robots are worth more points, and others will break down rather than get blown up. But these will be repaired, at which point you then have a second chance of trying to take them out. There really isn't much more to the game than that. There's a few different mega robots, but that's really just a cosmetic thing, more than anything else. This is really deep into the budget range. The final cassette contains our first real title, Operation Wolf, which had already wowed Spectrum owners the year before with its nicely scrolling background and lots of great looking masked sprites. So let's see how the light gun version will hold up. And in another first, this is the only game that gives us an option to calibrate the gun. And once we get into the main game, we see there's no real changes from what was previously released. So it's still a very solid game even if at times it seems to take more shots to take people out than you'd expect. And having to hit the space bar to throw grenades is a bit of a pain. But all in all, it is a very good title. And as it was barely a year old at this point, it was still a fairly big title, so it's great to see it included. And the last game is the only licensed game in this collection, Bullseye. And oh my god, what have they done to Bully? Amazingly, this might actually be one of the better game show to game conversions that you'll see. It's two player only, and after setting up some options, we're in the game. And the first thing you have to do is select your category, which you do using the keyboard. And once you've done that, you then have to throw your dart, or arrow as they like to call them in game, at the category using the light gun. And if you get that right, you then have to answer a question. And this is where this game will absolutely kill you, as these questions are very old and really quite obscure. And on top of all that, the answers have to be typed in exactly, which is a real problem for a dyslexic like me. But overall, the game actually follows the original TV format really quite well. Now I think it's a bit of a stretch to say that these games were worth over £20, as some of them you would have felt ripped off if you found them on a cover tape for one of the big magazines. Though it was good that at least one of the titles was actually a major game. So all in all it does fare pretty well when compared to the light guns for the various consoles. The gun seems to be quite susceptible to the amount of light in the room, and the gun has been much worse since I've had to have the direct lighting on the screen so I could record. So make sure the TV is as bright as possible and the amount of ambient light in the room is as low as possible if you want to have the best results. And of course, you're going to need to have a CRT TV. I really was hoping to open the gun up and show you what was inside, if only for the fact that I could try and fix the squeaking of the trigger. But this unit seems to be glued shut and I'd hate to break it by opening it up 
as there's a few other light gun games that were released, including a James Bond title. But we'll leave it for another time, as that was quite a lot of Spectrum action. And until next time, I was the Goldfish, that was a quick shot of Spectrum games, and this was Goldfish on Games. Thank you for watching, I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please consider using your light gun to target the other videos you can see on the screen right now, or by shooting those lovely buttons just below the video. And if you had one of these packs back in the day, I'd love to hear your experiences in the comments.